let's begin with the thought mathematics may not teach us how to add love or subtract hate but it gives us every reason to hope that every problem has a solution so i begin with this thought since we are going to re- uh, do a uh, a uh, a lot of things on critical thinking and analytical thinking so let's move on to the topic so just can you can you see the squares drawn here are you able to see yes yes i'll give you just a minute's time i think you can just go through and find out count the number of squares in it Twelve square now in first box. First one, how many? Twelve. Twelve. No, I think you need to just go look at it. Second one, twenty-five. First one is seventeen squares. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, yes. The first one is seventeen squares, ma'am. Ah, uh, uh, okay. I'm just waiting for answers from others also. First one, seventeen, ma'am. Seven. Mm-hmm. Ma'am, first one, twenty squares, ma'am. Uh, I think someone's. Uh, there is a lot of noise coming from some place. Just kindly mute yourself only when you're. Forty-eight, ma'am. Forty-eight square, first one. First one, okay. Next, any other answer? Mom, twenty. First one. Oh, who said that? Soundarya. Um, yes, ma'am. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Right right answer. Here. That's the right answer. So I think the time I gave you a lot of time, more than a minute, right? So the first answer is correct, right? And the second one. Forty correct, ma'am. Yes, absolutely right. So, the how ma'am. did you go do it? That's what I want you to understand. Ma'am, one one square box split to four. Yeah. Huh. Four squares. First so, one. First one. First one. Yes, ma'am. First one. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, totally twelve um, uh, square is this? Twelve so into four, forty-eight. Uh, the first one. First one forty-eight. No, no, no. First is not forty-eight. The first one's answer is twenty. Twenty. Oh, ma'am. Yes, there is a pattern to be followed here. So, see what are we doing now? I just want you to understand that before telling the answer, I just want you to understand something here. What are we trying to do? When you're given a problem, what are you doing? We look at it, we think, we are processing it, and we are trying to find ways and means to solve it. Yes. Here comes yes. the critical thinking, right? And you are analyzing. Okay, if this is not the way, that is the way. You are questioning yourself, right? You are trying to find out how to go about to get a result, isn't it? Okay. Yes, that's what is all about critical thinking, right? This is what children also we are supposed to make the children do. Okay, so now let me come to the answer part. You can see how many uh, columns are there in the first one. You can see three columns, right? Yes, and three four columns. rows. Four rows. Four so rows. you just multiply the rows first four rows and columns, right? Ma'am. Then keep on reducing the rows and the columns until you get zero. Come to zero, right? And then add all the results of it. You will get the answer. Ma'am, right? second one forty-three, ma'am. No, second one forty. Same man. Yes. There are five okay, rows. Uh, there are five columns. No, no ma'am. Four columns. Rows. Four columns yes. and five rows. So multiply five into four, then reduce that five to four, and reduce that columns of uh, that is four columns are there. Reduce it to three, so on. Three into four gives you twelve. Then again reduce the rows and number of rows and columns to two into three, then one into two. Zero into one, right? And then add up everything. So you'll arrive at the result. Got it? Got it, ma'am. 
Yes, ma'am. So we have reasoned out. So this is what I just wanted. I gave this only to make you understand what, how do we approach a problem? When any problem is there, we always look at it. We try thinking, analyzing how to go about it and find ways and means you just organize your thoughts and then go to solve it, right? We may get a wrong answer. It's okay, but we are organizing. And from our mistakes, what do we learn? We learn how to do it correctly, right? So we should never think that mistakes, we made a mistake or we are wrong, so we can't do it, should never come in. So it should be an opportunity for do, get, doing that problem once again, approaching the problem once again to arrive at a solution. So now let's go to the next one. Here's a game. It's just a small thing for small children only. This is for sixth standard level. So here I'll tell you the result of what you're doing in this. Here you can think of a number, any number, each one of you can think of any number. Multiply that number by eight. Okay. Then divide that result by two. Then add five to it. And then after that, subtract four times the number that you thought of. Now you subtract four times the number that you thought of. Done? Yes, ma'am. So, all of you have done? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So is the number five, the result is five, the last value? Yes, ma'am. So what we applied here, what can you just think of? Five what is the answer. Yes, five is the result. Any number you take, the result will always be five. Each one of you would have taken different, different numbers. So we can ask the children how to increase their critical thinking and creativity. You can give such things and ask them to frame one on their own, okay? They will also try, they'll be very happy to do this and to find out how to go about puzzles like, with puzzles like this. So they'll be very happy. They'll be sharing it with everybody in the world that this I created and they will try it on everyone. So the happiness that they gain from that, okay, the, will be immense. And the learning also takes place here. Along with that, they start thinking critically. Right? They, th they start to inno be innovative. That's what we want the children to do here. Right? So now let's go on to the topic. Move on to the topic. What is analytical and critical thinking? Okay. So I just gave you a small example just to go about so I've just given a just small definition. I don't want to have a lot of theory part in it. So I've just uh, reduced the theory part here. I've just given it, okay? So it says analytical skills are soft skills that help you identify and solve complex problems. These skills are important because they allow people to find solutions to various problems and make concrete decisions and action plans to so solve those problems, right? And now let's know what the abilities are of a person that leads to the mastery of analytical thinking, right? They should analyze the information. What That is what we did right now, isn't it? You are breaking down the problem, then you gather the information from that, identify what other things can be done or how and what to pick up from that problem and find out the root cause behind it or how to go about it and then organize the information to get the solution, right? Yes. Okay. So this is what is all about analytical thinking, right? How, and what is critical thinking? So critical thinking is the analysis of and the evaluation of ideas and information in order to reach a sound judgment and conclusion. So it is 
any discussion any decision making or any problem solving we need to apply this critical thinking everywhere it is applicable any situation we are in we always will look into the problem how and by listening and we have to be a very good what is the characteristic of these uh, critical thinkers they will be very active listener they will question themselves for anything that they get they are not ready to accept it or take it by the word they go by like you know keep on questioning our uh, one question you get an answer then they go to the next to arrive at the answer for that and that leads to another question and the series of questioning helps them to analyze the situation and evaluate those ideas to reach a sound judgment right and then they do a little bit of introspection when they introspect themselves they understand are they able to really think critically and we have to like you know reflect on whatever we are thinking is it right am i going in the right path which gives you the solution and the humility to see things from others perspective that is also very very important you shouldn't be egoistic and think that only what you think is right always you should have you should be a very good listener and you should uh, accept the others ideas also okay so which will be a healthy critical thinking right which will lead to healthy critical thinking now let us see the characteristics of this five ways of developing okay the critical thinking you have to formulate your questions know what you are looking for specifically gather your information and you know now what is relevant to your problem or decision and go about a research or delve into the thing and find out what you need out of it apply the information and what concepts are at work that you should find out when the child is solving the problem what he has to apply there to solve get the solution which property he has to use which rule he has to use that's what will help him decide and then consider the results or the implications of those concepts that he is using and explore other points of view to arrive at a final decision right this is what in gist i can tell you about what is critical thinking and analytical thinking right and let's go on to the what the students how it is helpful when students think critically they take reasoned decisions reasoned decisions is just that when you when the child doesn't doesn't when he he looks at a problem he will not immediately just simply he will not tell something without thinking he will not answer he will look at the problem what are the things given there he will analyze and then come to a decision okay which will be a uh, what you call a uh, a right way of thinking the path of thinking will be in the right direction and judgments about what to do and think or we may say is a criteria or grounds for a thoughtful decision and they do not simply guess or apply the rule without assessing its relevance see when they see when they are very small when you give a problem on addition or subtraction just by looking at the numbers one is big one is small they will say addition ma'am subtraction ma'am like that they will keep on telling all the kinds of rules what they can apply without thinking so now we are giving what we have to make them do is we have to give them situations where they will think and apply where they are that is in our day to day life if uh, if a small child when the child is very small in the primary classes you can just like you know whatever they are doing at home whatever things they are um, uh, playing with you can ask gather them gather together we give words that we use daily in our daily life which may, by which they can understand that it is addition okay take away give it to someone remove all these words will help the child to understand that it is subtraction so when the, these are applied in a, what we apply in our daily life we use instead of always giving them a symbolic representation okay you do 24 minus 7 you add 30 36 plus 4 not it is it shouldn't be that way it should be going into a real life situation and then presenting it 
so what happens is the child relates it to mathematics he will be able to relate it to mathematics very well that's what i would uh, say and uh, just of it how we can do that in our classrooms what we should do is we can promote effective collaboration that means that is you can put the children into groups so make them do an uh, give them a part of the question and ask them to think what is given here to analyze what did you look into after looking into the question what are, did you understand keep asking question after question after question till you get the answer that you want them to think okay that is what we are supposed that helps the child to understand that he is going in the right and when he does it you should appre appreciate him and give him the like you know feedback that he is on the right track so this helps what 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 will it help in it will help the child to self evaluate okay he will introspect and try finding the that what we are doing is right or not and he will try analyzing every time he will start thinking before giving an answer jumping to a conclusion okay and then it will help him in making informed decision so one of the best way to uh, improve the critical thinking is to put them into groups there are a lot of classroom activities that is structured activities are there which will help them to arrive at a treasure hunt or some things like that which will be like you know enjoyable as well as they will try to reason out you can give bits and parts of the information of that question that you want them to solve and ask them to De describe or tell what you have understood and come and discuss about it so each group will be eager to tell their findings so using that findings finally they can conclude and arrive at a result that is what is all about critical thinking and analytical skills right so now i have taken one lesson here for you to uh, just go through how it is being applied through the chapter right so i have a question for you here okay i i think i can show you more. before that i can show you one small uh, video okay am i sharing are you able to see the, the year video is 1968 yes ma'am yes, ma in mexico city nick fosbury has just made a record breaking high jump winning the gold medal and completely changing how future athletes approach the high jump but let's rewind and see how critical thinking played a part in getting Fosbury here. For years, high jumpers used a variety of techniques, all of which allowed for the jumper to land on their feet after clearing the bar. Athletes assumed that these were the most optimal methods. But in high school, Fosbury tried them and found himself getting below average results. So he asked himself, hmm, how else could I jump over this bar? Instead of accepting the norm, he began experimenting and came up with a new and different jumping method. He would jump and rotate in the air so that he went over the bar head first on his back. At the time, he was laughed at and criticized for this new method. It looked pretty silly and was so different from the typical methods, but it worked due to some unexpected benefits. It lowered Fosbury's center of gravity, actually placing it below the bar, even though he himself was jumping over it. This allowed him to use less energy while increasing his height. And by leaping backwards, he was reducing his chances of knocking the bar off with his arms and legs. Using this technique, Fosbury was jumping higher than anyone else on his high school track team. He continued to hone this method in college and moved on to qualify for the Olympics. And so here we are, back in 1968, with Fosbury winning the Olympic gold medal. He took a problem, not being able to jump particularly high, and used critical thinking to come up with a solution, a new way of jumping that greatly improved his results. To this day, almost every high jumper uses this method, now known as the Fosbury flop. And so it just goes to show how critical thinking can both raise the bar and change the game. Yes, here I have some questions on the based on the lesson-based question right so it's a small thing what small children this is for sixth standard level they are uh, they can use it okay so there are some uh, six unit squares the figures are having six unit squares right 
So which has got the smallest perimeter? This is for small children. Sixth standard level, they can understand. Fifth, sixth can do, I think. You're given some figures. The rectangle okay. will have the smallest perimeter. Yes, very blue. good, very good. Yes, the blue color, the first one will have the smallest perimeter. So this, this, how, so when you give such kind of things, they start thinking on it. So now, uh, can you judge what might be the topic that we'll be dealing with today? Area and perimeter. Yes, exactly, right? So give them exercises to just get ready for the lesson, right? Now the next question. This question number one has got two rectangles, similar rectangles only. This I couldn't get a figure like this, so I have drawn. Okay, so I've removed a piece of small uh, child-like piece removed from it from the rectangle, which is whose length is five centimeters by two centimeter, right? So this uh, which statement uh, holds true in this case? The perimeter remains same, but area changes. Area remains same, but perimeter changes. Both area and perimeter will change. By looking at the figure, you have to answer. There are no measurements given, only the what is removed. I have just shown the size of the piece, that's it. So using this, you have to find out which statement is correct. First statement is correct. First statement is first one. See, when we first see, one. if you just place it back here, you're using up the space five and two. So the perimeter is not changing in any way in both the figures, isn't it? But the area will surely change when you remove a small part of it. So the first reasoning is correct. So it makes, it allows for uh, the child to think on what he has learned. Okay, this gives the opportunity for the child to think and understand and apply and use or recall whatever he can do about whatever he has learned earlier. This helps him. So such thought provoking things we can just, we need, but we need to be really little creative. That is what is very, very important as a teacher. So now we need to change our ways and means of how we present the things to the children. So which will help them to understand the concept and they will think also about it. So now the next question here, there are two pentagons given here. So two regular pentagons of perimeter 20 centimeters are joined as shown. Find the perimeter of the new figure. 36, 36 centimeters. Uh, no, no, just think what it can be. Yes. Will it be 36? Ma'am, 32 centimeter. Ma yes, it is 32. Right? Because those two sides are not coming outside. So okay. they should understand what is perimeter. The definition of perimeter will become clear here. When you give things like this, they will understand that perimeter is nothing but only the outside, outer boundary, the length of some of the length of the sides of the outer boundary, right? So this, even though there are two figures, but we are not using these two lengths. That's what we have to understand. Okay. So very small, small things, which will make them to think and recall all the things that are needed for our lesson, right? And now there is one more thing. This is, I found it, actually, I wanted to, uh, you all to do this uh, in a bigger scale, but uh, okay, which we will finish off with this. Fit the pieces to form the large square. There are some pieces given here, which you have to use. Uh, I hope it is visible. The screen is visible clearly. Yes. Are you able yes, to see? Yes. So the fit the pieces to form the large square, right? Find out which piece is the odd one. So you all can just quickly take your uh, look at it and understand how you will place these to complete the bigger rectangle, the pink color rectangle given there.
I wish I knew animation. I could have shown you, replaced it and shown you. <laughs> but I can, I, unfortunately, I don't know. So, were you able to find? Just give it a thought. The pieces given there should fit into that rectangle and complete it. It's D, ma'am. D is yes. not the so, it's, uh, it's B, ma'am. Okay. Any other answer? I think it's B, ma'am. Okay. Any other answer? One person said B and D. I heard two answers. Any other answer? Okay, let me give you the thing. See, when you replace the, uh, the rectangle with A, B, C, and D, it completes it. Only thing is that you should like a jigsaw puzzle, you have to know where to place them. Right? The D will not fit in. If you put D, there will be one box which should be empty or which you can't replace. That is why the D cannot be used. Now you can sit, you just use these to fit in. And can anyone show me the figure if you have drawn? Actually, how did I find the answer, ma'am? Mm. I counted the box, ma'am. Okay, so okay. So when I count A, B, C, E can get 16 boxes. Uh, oh, that way. I mm. uh, uh. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that's also, that's, that's absolutely right. That is another, I know, mathematically you calculate it. <laughs> Otherwise also you can just fit in like a zigzag puzzle. The child will try to do. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. See how you approach the problem. Very good. I, I just wanted to get these kind of answers only. Right? I was expecting these things only. So, very absolutely right. So, each one has got a different perspective of looking at the problem and trying to arrive at the result. That totally we want our children to do. Exactly this is what we want our children to try and enjoy the happiness of arriving at the result in their own way. Right? The process is only what is important. The end product, that is when I say the answer is not what is very, very important, but they should know that they are coming closer to it. That is what our aim should be. Okay, next section will be, I hope you enjoyed all these. So, I have huh. You want to take down? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Mahalakshmi, I can see just one minute. Ah, yes, yes. You can just draw over it with a color pencil or something so that you will know. Yes, exactly. It will fit into this big rectangle, all the pieces. Okay. So, uh, why? what is that extension there, uh, ma'am? Nandini Priya, ma'am. I can see an extended part of it. All these shapes, when you take A, B... Uh, it is. E and E, it will fit in. Okay. You can yes. play, suppose you think that the last column is E. The same way you replace all these things. This three and this one here, that is B. Okay. And then the, this one, if you invert it, you can place it here and the square will come in the middle. Right. You can draw and see how it in, fits in. Right. Like this, there is another game called a pentomino. You can make a pento pentomino is uh, uh, that is a uh, formation of uh, these uh, unit squares. There are five. It, the name of it is five. Uh, that is uh, why it is called pentomino. You know, the name is because it has got five unit squares in different forms. How, how many ever different ways you can form it and then fit into a rectangle, form a rectangle. That's a puzzle. So by the end of the lesson, you can give them this as an activity or a project or something. They will enjoy finding out. They will enjoy it like anything. You can form the, they, you ask them, I am giving you five unit squares. How can you, different shapes, how you can make out of it. 
right we are having the see if we have four four squares also they are all different here it is easy to find because i know i can understand easily very nice reasoning out that only one has got five right but there everything will be five in a pentomino everything will be five there will be all five unit squares and then it will be arranged in different different shapes you ask them to draw and come and then ask them to uh, place all these pentominoes together to form a big rectangle that will be an interest very very interesting uh, you know uh, thing for area an activity for area okay so let's go on to now we will be deriving all the uh, area of a rectangle parallelogram triangle everything one by one right all of you have your papers ready with you all the cutouts are ready i think i'll stop sharing so that i can show you are coming which is very sharp for the years okay so the first one is how to find the area of a parallelogram all of you know how to find the area of a rectangle what is the formula for the area of a rectangle everybody knows i think l into b l into yes it's a length into breadth so here you have a rectangle here can you see the rectangle i hope you are able to see the rectangle yes ma'am yes ma'am okay you all have to take your rectangle and mark a small that is a line joining from one vertex to the opposite side of it a slanting triangular shape you have to draw on the rectangle will you be able to do yes ma'am yes ma'am okay any piece any rectangular piece of paper will do even a full sheet of paper you can use and do it is it visible yes ma'am is it looking up uh, the reverse order i mean, i don't know whether the screen i um, are you able to see it in the right uh, direction yeah ma'am yeah ma'am yes ma'am okay because for me it is coming the inverted image only i can see that is why i'm asking done yes ma'am done okay so now what you do is you you just cut off this piece triangular piece very neatly cut off this triangular piece and take it clockwise like this to the other side right cut off the small triangular piece and take it clockwise to the other side right i'll show you the picture how you do it See here now both of it I'm showing. Are you able to see? Mm, yes, ma'am. I removed the piece from here and I just transferred it to this side. So now, can you see the change in the shape? It's a parallelogram. Now it has become a parallelogram. parallelogram. So we can replace the length of the rectangle. you can replace the length of the rectangle are you all able to see uh, clearly yes, yes ma'am ma oh okay okay yes, okay i just wanted to clarify okay so the length of the rectangle becomes you can replace by the word base and this is already the height i have marked this uh, right angle here so you can understand clearly where we have replaced it from this side we brought it to the other side of the rectangle so it is the same space we have used yes the area remains the same area of a rectangle is equal to the area of a parallelogram and hence we get the derive the formula for the area of a parallelogram as area of a parallelogram is equal to base into height is it clear 
clear to all of you it's a wonderful way to uh, like you know show it to the children ma'am show it a little bit up ma'am yes yes sure now can you see yes ma'am okay okay ma'am done yes ma'am yes so this is one to, to find the area of a parallelogram using a rectangle right so the next thing we move on to using the area of the parallelogram now once you got the parallelogram you can get make another one also a parallelogram like this one more time right and you do one thing you uh, put a cello tape behind it so that the pieces don't get displaced that way you can do one and keep one more one more parallelogram you will need it so you can use that to make exactly like this you can make one more parallelogram okay i'll show you next how to find okay are you able to see this is the same parallelogram yes ma'am so here what i have done i have just joined the diagonal i've drawn one of the diagonal mm yes ma'am right yes ma'am one of the diagonal i have joined okay done as if you do with me you'll understand it very clearly as to how to go about this is little like you know you need to know how to do it do you all do this activity or uh... no it's new only ma'am okay it's new so this is very very useful very useful activity before you start the lesson with the formulas uh, you can just teach the concept with this itself directly you can show Okay. You're able to see the same parallelogram. Now, can I go ahead? Now, what you do is along the diagonal you cut it. Along the diagonal, see that these two pieces. See, I have stuck it. These two pieces, I stuck it with a piece of paper behind so that it doesn't move. And now, cut off this through the diagonal. One second, uh, somebody has to be muted. I think. Yes, thank you, thank you for muting. This is what. Now I'll show you the next thing with the pieces. See, I have kept the pieces here. Can you see? I've cut off the diagonal. Are you able to see? I've cut off the diagonal. Right. I'll remove this. Yes. 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 Can you see? I've cut off. Mm. Right? Yes, ma'am. So holding it on the paper so that oh, it flew away. <laughs> One second, just let me get back the paper. It flew. Yes. Sorry for the interruption. now what you do is you just rotate rotate it okay just rotate like this the other piece and put it below this triangle right just rotate it so are you able to see so what do you get now what do you get now two congruent triangles or two yes. similar triangles see can you see yes sir yes, so how do you derive the formula for a triangle now uh, uh ma'am times the area of triangle equal to area of parallelogram yes so area of a triangle is equal to half of the area of a parallelogram yes. so already you wrote half base into height as the area of a parallelogram so you are getting area of a triangle is half of 
the area of a parallelogram half into base into height okay so this you can stick it exactly on the paper to uh, sushma ma'am yes uh, we can also say uh, diagonal bisect uh, no the uh, diagonal divide the divide yes. the parallelogram yeah. into two components yes yeah. yes absolutely right absolutely right that's the thing but since they would not have done congruency by then okay so since they have not learned anything about congruency we know that it is congruent we can say they are similar in all respects all that words you can use to describe it once they learn the congru congruency concept then you can tell them see we know that it is congruent but we cannot use the word for that word for the child because they would not know what do you mean by congruent they don't know they have never heard that word what is it they don't understand so we can just tell them that it is two it divides the diagonal divides it into two like triangles which are similar in all respects right i think that word they will understand are you all able to see yes okay this is a wonderful uh, way to uh, present it because they 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 won't have any doubt beyond this okay done yes ma'am okay so show it once again if somebody has not done it i'm just showing it once again from the beginning this is the parallelogram which how we did first earlier the same way you cut out the parallelogram join this diagonal and then just to rotate it and place it back you find that the two triangles that they overlap each other so we find that the area of a triangle is half of the area of a parallelogram that's what we find out so and hence we arrive at the rule that area of a triangle is half base into height and can you share the uh, papers also like how we are showing now okay i'll 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 just do one thing i anyway i have done it so i'll add it to the ppt and i'll send it to you okay thank you ma'am yes welcome. thank you so much ma welcome welcome this is a wonderful thing to do for the children now the next thing what i want to do to do is um yes area of a trapezium how will you find it? okay you have a trapezium like this take a cut out of any trapezium like this two trapeziums you take of the same kind right make a copy of it like this okay got it done i know it takes time you can just draw a simple just fold the paper and twice so that you can just cut out together okay visible clearly done yes one minute ah okay and i've just named the longer side as a and the shorter side as b and i've marked the height also okay
just holding it for you. Got it. I'm just overlapping one on the other so that you can see it is exactly the same size and shape and everything. Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now, next I'll show you how I rearrange those trapeziums. Right? I'll show you a picture so that it will be easy for you to understand. Not fly. See, I have just tilted the trapezium. See, if I show you this itself, I can show so that you can understand it in a better way. So what is the new figure formed? Parallelogram. Parallelogram. So what do you find now here? that the area of a trapezium is half the area of a parallelogram. Clear? The area of the trapezium is half the area of a parallelogram. So that is what I have shown here. So how do you replace and write? You can replace the base as A plus B and the height as H. So it is A plus B into H when it is a parallelogram. And when you're finding it for a trapezium, it will be half of the sum yeah, of the parallel yeah. sides into height. Okay. So I have to put it here so I can show it. Right. Is it clear now? Are you able to understand? Yes. So what I have done, I have taken a parallelogram. I have drawn a line. And I've cut out. And I have replaced it in the form of a trapezium. You can do it in any way. You can just rearrange it in any, any order. Because they, it will be the same thing only. Any order you can go about. You can take two trapeziums and invert it. Or you use a parallelogram and cut it. Having different, that is the base divided into one will be a longer part. And the other one a shorter part. So you get a two trapeziums. And then you just interchange the positions. So you can understand that it occupies the same space as the parallelogram. The two trapeziums occupy the same space as the parallelogram. Clear? We are able to see. The, I have to stick it here. And I'll just uh, give me a second and just do that. Actually, since we are, uh, children will take a lot of time. You need to tell them earlier to bring these cutouts. Otherwise, it will not be easy for them. One second. I can see the same thing. This was a parallelogram. I have drawn one line to cut off from here. So I took another paper, another color paper, so that you will understand it clearly what has been done. And finally, you can find out the area of a trapezium. You can stick even one on top of the other and show that they are, that is how exactly half occupies exactly half the area of the parallelogram. So when you start, you can stick us only one single trapezium, then make a copy of it, ask them to make a copy of it, and then do this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Nandini, ma'am. Right. Absolutely right. Okay. Clear? Can I move it? Sorry, ma'am, my mobile automatically disconnected. 
okay okay no problem no problem ma'am this uh, connectivity issues will be there because it's raining no so no issues able to see clearly ma'am down ma'am down okay okay down 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 yes i'll send it to you i'll just take a i'll scan it and i'll send so that you will get a clear picture of it okay because otherwise it becomes very difficult for to do many things at the same time so i wanted <laughs> jam packed space whatever i can i have filled it so i thought these are some very very interesting like you know children will enjoy doing it cutting sticking and finding because they themselves are discovering it so they'll feel that happiness of doing it okay done so this is was all for seven standard level the next thing what we can do is cut out where is that i didn't cut out a lateral okay now this uh, we can one more thing without anything i have not drawn any quadrilateral i've just taken a square paper if you tear off all the angles of the square or any other quadrilateral it can be any other shape quadrilateral it can be a trapezium it can be a parallelogram it can be any quadrilateral ask them to remove the angles and stick it at a point what will they observe all the four angles Add up, yes. So sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral is equal to three sixty degrees. They will understand it very clearly without any difficulty. You don't have to tell them also. They themselves will tell. Just ask them to tear off, cut out any quadrilateral, any kind of a quadrilateral, and tear off the angles and stick it. Mark a dot on a paper or in their record book, and then. place all the angles arrange all the angles one after the other in such a way that they you find that it is an all the four angles fit exactly into around the point so we can understand then they'll immediately tell that the sum of the angle it is a complete angle ma'am they'll shout and tell once they do it so they can understand clearly that the interior sum of the interior angles is equal to 360 degrees this will be for 8th standard level as any is anyone able to do just tear off just tear off nothing you need not uh, measure or do anything with it just tear it and stick it on a paper that's all you can divide that four into uh, just half a sadly it's need it need not be cut with a scissor also the next activity you can draw on a squared paper a quadrilateral any kind of a quadrilateral you can just draw it so that and mark its exterior angle like this on a paper right draw a quadrilateral any kind of a quadrilateral and extend one side that is all the side, that is each side of the quadrilateral is extended and the exterior angle is marked okay i'll just mark that and show you color it so that i hope you can see all the exterior angles i have colored with different color okay i have extended each of the sides so that it forms the exterior angle see each side this is one side This is the second side. This is the third side, and this is the fourth one. So when you extend it, you get the exterior angle. So this is what I was stressing on when we did triangles. You remember? They should know how to form these exterior angles. 
So once we do that chapter, they'll be thorough with it. And they won't make any mistake. Now remove all these angles and stick it at a point. Okay. Okay. What will you find? Just check out and tell me. Okay, I'll hold it for you. You can just, with your uh, cutter, you can just cut out the pieces. You can neatly cut. You can make a bigger ones also so that it becomes easy for you to remove because small ones will be difficult to cut with a sharp knife or whatever you cut. The cutter you can use. That will be easier. Place it on a hard board or something and then just remove the pieces and try it out. Okay. So what will you see? Again, the sum of the exterior angles of a quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. Okay, so you don't have to teach anything. They will do it themselves and they will find out. You don't have to tell them anything. They will find out on their own and they will come back with the result. You just have to give them this activity. They will do it and then ask them what did you observe and give your observation. So they'll come out with an answer. Okay. So I think I covered almost six, seven, eight, all the area and perimeter topics. Uh, the one which is left out is finding the pi value or the circumference formula for circumference of a circle and area of a circle, right? I'll just share my screen once again so that I can show you that because I don't think if we continue to do that, I don't think we can finish the rest of the things. So I'll just get back to screen sharing. So I'll show you. I have just attached it with what the children have done. So finding the circumference, you can ask them to cut out on a hard board or something, cardboard or whatever the cover of your notebook and all. You, they will be having old books. So in, on that, you can just ask them to stick the paper, use a, a compass to cut out the circles and then find out the relationship or ask them to write the diameters and the circumference by measuring it with a thread the thread only they have attached here okay the threads they have attached here which they have used so they will measure it with a scale and write down the measurements and they will find they will be able to find finally arrive at the results that the circumference by diameter is a constant it's always three point something may not they may not get every time three point it may be 2.98 something they may get or some approximate value but most of the time it will be three point something when they use accurately, they are able to do it properly. They will surely get the pi value three point something. So we can tell them that pi is a constant. Okay, but it is a ratio between the circumference and the diameter. And that is how we get the value of the circumference as pi into D and the diameter can be replaced by twice the radius. So you get the formula two pi r. Okay. Okay. okay, so now let's go on to finding the area of a circle. Right, so here they have taken two circles, okay, with radius 3.54, I think that will fit into their books. If they take huh, two circles and then fold both the circles together into 16 parts you will get 16 sectors, which will give you an accurate result. That is why I'm just wanting you to, uh, yes, keep folding so that till you get 16 parts, once you may make the creases, cut off all the segments, take only half of the circle. Okay, once you made it into 16, cut off half part of one color, 
and the remaining of the other color so that you can understand this this and all can be shown with geogebra those who know to do operate geogebra they you will find it that is uh, technology kali those who are uh, sound you can use geogebra to show this and they will enjoy seeing how the uh, that is the parts are merging together it's a very beautiful experience i saw the picture alone i couldn't share it i don't know i forgot to do that okay so this practically they can do so we are used see can you see the yellow uh, sectors which i have used here there are eight they are eight in number same way the red ones are also eight in number so they have been arranged by inverting them and they form a rectangle so everything on this whatever based on area it is all a rectangle it's all a rectangle that is amazing fact that you understand by doing this right so that the circumference of the circle we found out now that it is 2 pi r so half of the circumference is pi r that is equal to the length and the breadth see when the number of uh, sectors become smaller and smaller and smaller it appears to be a exact rectangle okay the that is the angle uh, which is formed here the theta keeps on decreasing and you can see a complete rectangle form so the breadth can be equal to the radius and that is how you get the formula for the area of a circle as pi r square okay the length is pi r multiplied by the breadth which is r so the area of the resultant area of the circle is pi r square so it will take some time you can do it slowly at home and uh, see for yourself okay so i have some uh, questions where the children find it difficult to uh, go through and find out the results so those kind of questions i have added to this so that we all can uh, sit and think together and do can i move the slide or move the slide now go to the next yes ma'am yes ma'am oh, sorry <coughs> okay here i have given a situation okay follow the instructions and you have to go about you draw any picture using only triangles and squares within a rectangle of dimension 10 cm by 5 cm so you have to first draw a rectangle and within that you draw any picture any picture just draw that's enough no need to cut off and stick and all you can just draw with your pencil then one after the other only follow the thing step by step first finish the first step just simply something it's not needed to draw also you just cut off a 10 in 10 by 5 cm rectangle then place it on another paper in such a way that you have 5 cm space all around so you are you trying to make a frame for it right so you can ask them the question is it forming another rectangle as a child they will like to answer this they'll immediately say yes it is forming a rectangle once they form the rectangle ask them to find the length and breadth of the bigger rectangle which they made now can anybody tell me just what what will be the length of the bigger rectangle the outer one yes could you find out the length of this inner see i have drawn a small figure here the length is 10 the breadth is 
right and you have left a space of 5 cm all around it so what can be the length of this outer one Twenty, ma'am. Is it what? What will it be? Twenty. Very good. How do you? How do you go about it? How do you go about it? Actually, two sides when the length extends, I just add it, ma'am. Yes, correct. So what is the? So we are what we are teaching them. What we are teaching them that if the pathway is outside, what you want to do? You have to add the twice the width to the length. Then you will get the outer dimension. Yes, the length and the breadth. Yes, you yes. add uh, to the inner dimensions. If you add twice the width, you will get the outer dimension. Outer dimension. Okay. So once you get the outer dimension, then they have asked the next step is find the area of the border given for the picture you made. So will the child understand what to do and how to find the area without you telling them what they have to do? Yes. My purpose is only that I don't want you to find the answer or anything. I'm just asking you to just go through the experience of the child, what the child will think and how he will be able to arrive at the result. So do we need to teach such problems by telling them that you to add two W this, that and all when we tell they don't understand, they can't memorize also. After next day, when you ask them, they are not able to remember. But here they will think, what did I do? How do I get it? They will think and ponder and find out as to how to arrive at the result. Yes? Okay, okay so there is one more thing for you here. I have one more question. So it's just a Ludo game what you use, so which we can use for teaching the crossroads, area of crossroads. Again, the same thing applies here. One by one, step by step, you have to tell them what you have to do, what the child has to do. Okay? So how do they arrive at this? These crossroads are at the center, one parallel to the length and one parallel to the breadth, crossing each other through the middle of the board. So how do they find the area of the crossroads? So one is parallel to the length. So we can say since it is parallel, the length of that path is 25 centimeters and its breadth is 5 centimeters. So they can find the area of that rectangle. Right? And then again, one is parallel to the breadth. So they know the length and breadth of that rectangle also. So they can easily find out area. But one thing happens here, you have to remind them, you have crossed that area twice, the center part, you have crossed twice. So they need to subtract that. And hence they'll get the area of the cross. But they, this, you have to make them arrive at one by one slowly, you have to just you know, guide them so that they... So such kind of problems make them to think and do apply what they have learned. We have taught them an area of rectangle. So they are going to use that. How will they apply that? That's what we have to guide them to. Okay? Yes. One more thing. These are some typical questions where uh, I think they keep making mistakes and we need to like, you know, correct them again and again. So here the question says, for a project work, uh, Priya cut out a circle of radius two centimeters from a bigger circle of radius 5 centimeters. Find the area of the ring that she gets. Okay. So here they are using the area of the circle. So you know that the bigger circle has got a radius of 5 centimeters. So from that she is cutting out a small piece whose radius is 2 centimeters. So there are two circles involved here, they will understand. Once they do it themselves, they, you can give them, ask them to draw it in a paper, cut that out. So they'll know that the first one's radius is five, so they can find out the area. And here there is a shortcut, in fact, 
to do it. I think I can use it. Huh? Don't know whether it will be able to work. Uh, so here, uh, yes, so area is equal to pi capital R square minus pi small R square, right? So here you can even give that actually they have not learned uh, the identity, but if you give them, they can work out easily. Otherwise, with this itself, you can take, ask them to do it as by taking pi common the R square minus R square. R square minus they'll arrive at this result if they can are if they are uh, they, I, actually they won't know identities only when they come to eighth only they will know the you can they can apply the identity here a square minus b square to write it as a plus b into a minus b which makes the work even more simpler okay and uh, this is the place where i found that many children make mistake many children Get back to the ink. Where is that ink? No idea how to use it again. Okay, whatever it is. So, uh, oh, the eraser is only working. How do I get back to the pen? Okay, whatever it is. Have you read the question? Geeta made a table mat in the shape of a letter D. She wanted to fix a lace to make the edge look beautiful. If the length of the diameter is 28 centimeters, find the length of the lace needed to cover the outer edge. So, how do they go about doing this? They have to first understand that it is only half of a circle. Once they understand that, then they, they, what they will do, you know, they will find out, yes, miss, we know it is very simple, easy. And what they, what will they do? Where will they stop at? They will find only the half of the circumference of the circle and leave the answer there. Is that the correct answer? Ah, they'll forget to add the 28 centimeters. The diameter, they'll forget to add. So these are the places where we can look into and help them out in solving it easily okay some questions whatever i could uh, remember i have taken up how do you go back to mom's case okay so next thing that i think i can share is a quadrilateral okay area of a quadrilateral how do you get it oh this has not been erased i need to erase it Just one second, I'll erase this. Those things are not going. Mm. Yes, in this, how do you do? Can you see the question clearly? Yes, ma'am. I hope I'm not boring you, people. No, not at all, ma'am. Uh, uh, because, uh, see, uh, uh, yes, they have to understand that the, when they join the diagonal, it divides into two triangles. So they need to find the area of the two triangles. Right? So half into mm. D1 plus D2. Mm. Yes, half D into D2. base. The base is common. Okay? So half AC. into AC into H1 plus H2. The height only will be here. It is same oh, by chance. But otherwise, it may be different. Different quadrilaterals. It will be since I could make the rectangle easily. So I took a rectangle. You can take any polygonal shape and you can join it and you can accept it. Right? This all helps the, to think a bit and apply whatever they have learned. And there's one more question for the sixth standard level. This is very, very uh, like, you know, they need to think about a wire is cut into several small pieces. 
each of the small piece is bent into a square of side 3 centimeters if the total area of the small squares is 72 square centimeters what was the original length of the wire this is for sixth standard okay so many pieces are there it is bent to form a square of side 3 cm so the edge of a square is 3 cm first of all you ask them to tell what they understood by reading the question let them not read the question fully just uh, ask them to go by sentence by sentence break the question into parts and ask them questions like what did you understand from the first sentence what did you understand from the second sentence or how do you decipher what you after reading the question what do you what what, uh, what do you come to know so they will start thinking and they'll start telling one by one they will arrive at the result you don't have to tell them anything they will arrive one by one each one will tell one one answer so they'll be happy that they are doing it themselves they are finding it themselves they are getting involved and finding out the answer okay so what you have to do here the total area of the small squares is given divided by the area of one square will give you the number of squares Eight. there right Eight square yes and then you can multiply to find the total length right so this is all for today